Bambi. How many years ago did, you know, we grew up watching Bambi where the whole first episode, the first scene, the premise is the hunter's the bad guy. Mm -hmm. He's the antagonist. And now poor Bambi is left alone without a family yeah. because some dumb gluttonous hunter had to go have the, yeah. pull his finger a little bit and he thought that was cool to blow the brains out of an innocent mother, you know? And that's what we don't even, even after that movie has been around for decades, we still, as a society, don't connect with the fact that that's not okay. There's no moral reason yeah. to take the, someone's mom from them, mm -hmm. you know? Just, just you, and I, you and I now. Yeah, that's right. What's uh, You said you've been vegan for three years? Yeah. What's, what's, like, what's your story? How did you come to it? Yeah, okay, thanks for asking. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, I was watching an interview with Moby. And before this, you were you, you, your whole life. Oh, I ate, I ate so much. I hardly ate any vegetables. Okay. I hated vegetables. Yeah. I hated salad. Uh, everything had to have either bacon or a bacon flavored thing like in it yeah. <laughs> in order for me to be able to choke it down. Yeah. But um, no, I mean, yeah, I, just like most people, I ate majoritively animal agriculture. I, I was just drink tall glasses of whole milk with mm. some chicken nuggets, you yeah. know, every day, every meal, all day long. Um, and that, that was pretty much it, just nasty junk food for so much of my life. Um, but yeah, I watched an interview with Moby and he talked about why he was vegan and they showed some slaughterhouse footage and they kind of touched on a lot of different topics. Um, but one of the things that really stuck out to me was the idea that we're not biologically designed to be eating these products. And I thought my whole life, well, it's just a necessary evil. You know, we have to go around, we're like lions, you know, we, we require the consumption of meat and dairy products. And that just, that uh, myth was dispelled instantly once I actually did the research and I looked into it because uh, the, the consensus in the scientific community now is we are herbivores, maybe starchivores, but either way, we ate a plant-based diet for the majority of our evolution. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we thrive on a plant-based diet, which means there's no reason for us to kill animals. Mm -hmm. And of course, animals don't deserve to die just because, like I have a dog, I have a cat, I love them, I treat them with respect. There's no difference between the dog or the cat and the pig or the cow and the chicken. Actually, pigs are smarter than dogs. So that's called speciesism. You know, you go to China, they decided dogs are the ones who should be victimized. Yeah. And eaten. you know, you go to India, they say, well, let's protect cows, but let's victimize all these other animals. Yeah. Um, some places eat horses. It's all based on culture and it's all speciesist, which is very much like racism and sexism. Um, it's the victimization of someone who's different than you. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And they are a someone. They have individual personalities. They you know, have emotions very akin to what humans have mm -hmm. um, and cognitive processes very much like us. Mm -hmm. So yeah, even if they, you don't need to like say that chickens are this exact same as humans, they deserve equal, equality and mm -hmm. same equal rights as humans and civil rights and all this. You just need to realize that your taste buds aren't worth more than the life of that sentient individual. Mm -hmm. And that's when it clicked. I, I realized that and there was no reason for me. It was very hypocritical for me to go home and pat my dog and yeah. say that I loved animals and then pay on a daily basis for the murder of animals. Um, yeah, and then, and then in the research now, in recent years, more data has come out showing that animal agriculture is a leading cause of climate change, you know, species extinction, mm -hmm. world starvation. I don't know if you know this, but most, um, most land in the world, 45% of the world's land mass is grown uh, is used to grow crops to feed to animals mm -hmm. and so it's just so wasteful animals eat the livestock eats six to twelve times what a human eats yeah. so we could actually we grow enough crops currently to feed the world the entire world three times over in world starvation three times over and we're just wasting it all away we're making excuses for why there's world starvation when like there's scarcity or something when we're actually producing or wasting an abundance of crops right now in our system. If we just cut out the middleman and set those animals free, let them do the, what's in their nature and mind their own business, we would have so much uh, plant foods in the system already that we could feed the world. So yeah, just so many reasons. I had no idea how destructive it, destructive it was to the environment and how needless it was. Um, now the UN came out with a climate report saying we have 10 years before we begin irreversible human extinction on a global scale. Oh, so that's, I mean, this is, we're looking at the beginning of the end of our entire species development mm -hmm. and just because of our dietary practices. Mm -hmm. That's the leading cause of climate change is animal agriculture. 91% of the Amazon has been deforested just for animal, animal agriculture. Yeah, so it's scary. It's scary when you look at all the details, all the water waste, all the ocean dead zones. Yeah. You know, we fish like 2.8 trillion 
fish out of the ocean and a lot of it's just waste. We have these like nets that are miles wide mm -hmm. and we just drag them across the ocean and scoop up. Like we, we, a small fraction of it is like the shrimp and tuna that we want. And then we just dump all these dead sharks and octopi and all this stuff out back into the ocean. Yeah, it's so an, sad. An interesting argument with, uh, with that uh, for veganism um, like say someone says that whatever, like that's whatever, right? And then up all the fish, who cares? Mm -hmm. but have you ever seen the movie Nemo? Yeah. And the point at the end of the first movie when they're being all dragged up by the net and they have, uh, who's it, Dorothy and both Nemo in the net. <laughs> yeah. When you're watching the movie at that point, like who are you like feeling like sympathetic? Exactly. Are you feeling? Yeah. It's weird and I think the only reason. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Yeah, I don't know. Why, why, isn't that why fascinating? Maybe they because... anthropomorphize these animals, yeah. give them like a sense of humanity, yeah. yet then they slyly like, plug the idea that you need to be contributing to this system yeah. it's so interesting like bambi how many years ago did you know we grew up watching bambi where the whole first episode the first scene the premise is the hunter's the bad guy mm -hmm. he's the antagonist and now poor bambi is left alone without a family yeah. because some dumb gluttonous hunter had to go have it yeah. pull his finger a little bit and he thought that was cool to blow the brains out of an innocent mother you know and that's what we don't even even after that movie has been around for decades we still as a society don't connect with the fact that that's not okay there's no moral reason yeah. to take the, someone's mom from them mm -hmm. you know yeah that's really good that's good. so interesting but yeah. you see that in movies all the time you're totally right yeah, that's it's really huge. bizarre like the, i wonder why more people don't like wake up to it yeah, yeah. Like the, i feel like it's a huge like sort of a stereotypical antagonist in a lot of like the older disney movies or just older movies like the, mm -hmm. the hunter yep yeah all that it's like fox and the hound yeah little animals. yep so i wonder even though kids are raised off these movies where they like, are just they see that and they still grow up to be okay with eating meat mm -hmm. and all that. they don't even mm -hmm. think twice about it what's good is that um, those are environmental stimuli that create seeds being planted in our mind mm -hmm. so even though we're not really getting the cogs in our mind turning we're not really thinking about it the cognitive processes aren't in full motion yet mm -hmm. that seed has still been planted so later on in life when one of these college students walks by and sees this table sign, they go, hmm, I don't know if I can prove them wrong. And they have to, that's watering the seed. The slowly that seed's gonna be given an opportunity to grow. And each time, you know, you in your life or anyone else goes out and says, hey, have you thought about being vegan? Or have you thought about, you know, how animals are victimized in, in the food industry? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's something you should think about. That's another seed, another seed, another seed, until eventually that seed is being nourished over time, mm -hmm. stimuli after stimuli, and then it starts to grow. And then people, uh, it just clicks one day and that's why you know when i was watching that moby interview that was just the culmination that was like the uh the toppling effect the final nail on the coffin just took one little another little uh stimuli to get me to give me that full push into uh, everything else like the bambi movie and all these other stimuli in my in my life i had vegan friends throughout my life and they never talked about why it was important they go vegan some of them aren't even vegan anymore because they didn't realize why you should be vegan they just did it whether because they thought it was trendy or they thought it was cutting edge or you know they they wanted to try to be a little bit healthier um, but they never went around and actively they weren't activists they didn't go around telling people actively hey this is a uh, something you should probably look into if you care about your health or the animals or you don't want to be a hypocrite in your life yeah one thing I hear a lot I just want to see what you think about this uh -huh. sort of from like a biological aspect I guess yeah is with um, our teeth Mm -hmm. The molars in the back, I guess. I, yeah. like, I hear the flat, big flat molars. Yeah, the big flat molars. Like the purpose of these, the reason we have them is for eating meat. Uh, what, what is no, I mean, if you look at the teeth of omnivores and carnivores, mm -hmm. they're serrated. Like if you open your cat's mouth, mm -hmm. they don't they don't have like flat molars. They have like thin serrated teeth. Mm -hmm. uh, also, carnivores and omnivores, their jaw isn't a, a rotary jaw. It doesn't move around. It goes just up and down because mm -hmm. that's what like a serrated you know the teeth would cut it into meat way better yeah. um so yeah the only the only indication that we have uh that a lot of people point to that would maybe look like we need to consume meat is the one little sharp incisor right uh -huh. the the canine teeth mm -hmm. um but it turns out um like gorillas have you seen the canines on a gorilla yeah they're huge uh but they're herbivores yeah. so that doesn't just that length of this that the, that with we have a sharp tooth doesn't justify a biological requirement to consume animal flesh um, um, yeah, yeah, and for the most part, our teeth are, are flat, most of our teeth, but we do have some more uh, like narrow um, teeth right here for cutting into the stems of plants and stuff like that, breaking open nuts and stuff like that. Mm.
Um, but yeah, yeah, for the most part, we have that jaw that moves around, grind side to side for plants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, most people uh, that die from choking, it's on a meat product. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's because your esophagus isn't designed. Carnivores and omnivores, they bite and swallow. Mm -hmm. They don't sit there chewing and chewing. Have you had a steak? They just sit there and chew and chew and chew and chew and chew and chew. You get like a sore jaw from, you know, a really, really tender steak. Yeah, uh, that, that's a sign that, you know, your body just isn't, isn't supposed to be consuming those products. I think this topic is super interesting. I think mm. even, even hearing from both sides, I could listen to it all day. Yeah, it is fascinating, I, I, isn't it? it? It's fascinating. I have a, a friend who might come. I don't know how long I'm able to hang out here <laughs> for, though. It's been it's been a great hearing you talk. I really like you staying around, man. Yeah. You're you're great, sweet guy, very open-minded. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I, I encourage you to try that 22-day vegan yeah, challenge. I'll check it Just out. Just give it 22 days and see how you feel. You yeah. know, there's there's really no reason not to. You yeah, know, except for just habit, you know, yeah. but we can always break habits. It takes about 22 days to yeah. break a habit, 21 days, a few weeks. So yeah. uh, if you give it a try and you're like, oh my gosh, this is not working for me, come back and we'll talk about it and I'll point you into re some resources that might help you out some more. Right, but awesome. uh, yeah. Cool. It was awesome listening. Thank you, sir. Yeah, have a good day. You too.